we're going over Silver Shard Mines. Now this map is not really a favorite of a lot. It's said to be biased against Horde because they have a default advantage against mid, especially since that's one of the starting cards that is usually all the way half, or at least most of the way down the track. And they have a pretty close path to lava. So they're, they have a pretty huge advantage for being very close to two of the paths. So I think it's important to first of all, take a second to explain this map. I don't think everyone quite understands what this map's about. So for this map, everyone knows you need to stand on the carts, make it switch to your faction, and then the cart goes down the path goes to the end and then you get all the points right not exactly so the way that this map works is when you take control of a cart for your faction even if it's not at the end you're actually accumulating points now you actually get almost more points from hold for holding the cart the entire duration than you do for the cap at the end each path has its own amount of points all caps anywhere on the map go for 150 points. That's why lava is very popular because it's a quick path that gets that cap points. But you also get one point per second holding the cart on a path. So for example, the two upper paths that are the longest paths, you actually get 220 points for holding. Now, this is huge for strategy. So what most teams do is they'll maintain two cart paths and they'll just look to do that to get the caps at the end so this really plays into the strategy because if you hold a cart for let's say most of the duration going to top and you lose it at the end you've still accumulated 220 points and let's just not forget that carts can be assigned to a faction for example alliance can have a cart and there can be no one on it so you can take control of a cart and leave and you are still getting your team points so this strategy going into the silver shard is to of course always fight in the rings because we want to take control of that for the holding points and then eventually for the capping points we've told everyone to get out their miniature map by opening up your map and clicking shift m we told everyone to get knockbacks and roots so that we can slow people that are trying to get into the ring but also what's key to remember is when you're leaving a lane to slow and cc the enemy team so that they can't go to the next lane as fast as you can this gets you an advantage from a holding the point uh, the next points perspective and you'll also be able to you know take people down before healers can catch up etc so that is a really big key that I don't see people do a lot. I see a lot of people just leave, but classes like Elemental Shaman can bind them up and keep them in that worthless lane doing nothing for a long time, especially with Earth Bind, Earth Grab, etc. Our strategy at the very beginning, starting off as an alliance, is to send one person to the top lane. He needs to get the cart immediately, start accumulating those hold points, and then just call incomings if anyone comes. This guy can really play at the uh, bottleneck because he can see a lot from that vantage point and if there's no one else behind him then there's nothing really to worry about. The rest of the team needs to go deep into mid. The mid lane cart is almost halfway through the cart path so we want to get in there deep. We know the horde has an advantage but we think we can overpower them as long as everyone mounts up and rides deep into the ring. Then after we take mid we will need to go mount up and to get deep into lava we think we can get in there knock them off and, and take that cart. And then from there on we're just going to call incomings, get cart we need to control two paths to win and what I usually do is do top and mid and if the enemy team is controlling lava we usually try to flip the switch to make it go up instead of down to lava which does two things first of all it makes it so they can't get those cap points as quickly but it also going up to the top will drive them farther away from the other nodes so it's not as easy to support from their graveyard and it's not as easy for them to switch to other lanes to damage i do also want to point out where the rejuve and zerker nodes are a lot of times people forget that the rejuve is down near lava and it can be very helpful if you're in a huge team fight down there to either deny them the rejuve or take it for yourself especially for for healers that could definitely use help down there especially since it's a cesspool of damage the zerkers are definitely useful especially if someone's at water going to mid to support to drop in it's great to go in beefed up and ready to go so so guys this is my explainer video on silver shard mines i appreciate any of your thoughts on what good strategies are for this let me know in the comments your feedback and like this comment if you like this strategy if you like what i'm letting you guys know and again guys i'll see you in the next video thank you for all your support